All right, so we are back with part two of every single Warhammer 40K faction explained by Bricky. You guys love part one. Let's get right to part two. Let's go, man. Let's go. Hey, all this part two. Let's go, y'all. Part series on the Warhammer races. If you haven't seen part one yet, we do the Imperium of Man. You can check that out in the description. Shout out to everybody for watching part one, man. Thank you guys so much. For this episode. If you already have, go ahead and keep on watching. Let's so go. after an entire episode of nothing but humans, Here we we're going to talk about chaos which involves humans again, but a little bit less. We also got demons. Uh-oh. The demons. What? Like hard, Nick. So as I've mentioned many times before, we've discussed the warp, the immaterium, the hellish landscape, the... Oh, I, I know what the warp is. I know the warp is. I know. I know. ...realm between the material realm of our existence. Now, in the warp, it's terrifying, horrible. There are demons everywhere. Things are crazy. All your minds and thoughts and emotions get projected there. It is both formless and empty. It is vast and tiny. It uh, obeys the laws of time and physics while simultaneously does absolutely nothing of the sort it is a hodgepodge and a culmination of just unknowable eldritch horrifying shit and there are four gods that permeate in chaos and the warp these are the four major chaos gods and if we wish to learn about chaos we need to learn about each and every single one of these uh -oh. chaos gods first uh -oh. up we have corn and he is the easiest corn is your classic satan he is all about anger, murder, fighting, blood, guts, death. You ever heard the term blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throw? No. That's Korb. The whole idea is that he is all about the fury and strength of battle. Oh. He doesn't care where blood comes from so long as blood is flowing. He wants to fight and murder and carnage and slaughter and death, 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 Bro death. Bro is death. a menace. That is corn okay very simple to understand okay next the up devil. you have zeech and zeech is the god of change however the god of change it's permeates in so many different other ways he's the most eldritch of all the demons what does that gods. mean he has this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's oh. always conniving and scheming. Uh, he's like the mastermind. To cause as much little bullshit as he can. Zeech is, is unknowable. Everything that makes sense, he will and won't do. Every future and setting and every type of, of destiny or fate is all foretold and also changed. He's a manipulator. It is set in stone while also completely random. He knows what everything is going to happen and also that none of it's going to happen. You would ask Zeech a question. And that question leads to three more questions. And those questions lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. And then he thinks to himself, what are questions even really? And are you even asking the questions or are you simply giving paths to answers and, and other horseshit. Zeech is just, <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with stuff. He is <laughs> yes and he is no. He is the understanding and he is complexity. He is unknowable. And that's what the God of Change is about. Very bizarre. And he likes birds a lot. Uh, I, don't, okay. I don't know why. Next up, we got Papa Nurgle. Uh -oh. Papa Nurgle, he loves you for who you are. Probably not. He will murder you just the same. But Papa- yeah, He'll eat you too. <laughs> <laughs> Nurgle is about rot, pestilence, death, and decay. He is the Let me end stop. of everything. Sorry, he Nurgle. And Zeech do not like each other very much because where Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. Ooh. He is all about miasma, Mr. And Traffic. pestilence, and large bloat and pus and, and organs and people just being sedentary, sloth. He is the idea that everything will rot and decay and die. Nothing is certain besides decay and death. Yo, is All he of okay? Us will end up the same way and broken down through just sheer never ending decomposition. Ew. So the joke that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that, because we all end up the same. We all rot and we all die and wither. Oh, no. That's Nurgle. And he's got a general theme of, of course, pestilence and, and different kinds of diseases Ew. and sickness and things of that nature. That's generally he got Nurgle. every he's uh, uh, HIV. Well. I know he dirty. He's he chunk. Finally, we have the youngest of the chaos gods, and that is Slanesh, also known as the Prince of Pleasure or the God of Unspeakable Excess. Slanesh is generally referred to with sex, but it's not only sex, it's just that's a good avenue if you want to make stuff. 
Sonesh is just the idea of the senses of the body being cranked to not just 11, but more like 17. See, we'll discuss oh. Sonesh a little bit more when we talk about the Eldar, because they done fucked up. But she, he, it, or whatever, is mainly about just the excess of emotions. And therefore, sex is generally a large part of it. However, it's mostly pain and torture. Lots of pain, torture. Oh, wait. Okay, wait, wait. I heard about her. Oh, oh, um, him. It, uh, whatever. Yeah. I heard about, uh, this person right here. So basically, what they do is, they like, it's kind of like, so basically, correct me if I'm wrong, but they give you so much pleasure to the point to where, like, like, you kind of feel numb, whatever. So whenever you feel numb to that pleasure, you need more of it and more of it. It's kind of like real life, in a sense. Like, it's kind of messed up because in real life, whenever you get more and more of something that you already got and, like, you get more and more of it uh, because, like, you, like, you're so numbed out in the brain that you need, like, you need more, like, extreme versions of it. Bro, I think she does that. Oh, oh him. Here, I didn't even know that, that was a dude or what. I thought that was a girl. That's why I started touching my chest. But then I was like, he said, he said, Prince. I'm thinking, I, I said... I, Prince, that's a dude. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, you know, hey, to each his own, but I don't go that way. But th that's why that, you get what I'm saying, right? Sometimes sexually related or drug related. Lots of drugs. Lots of drugs. Drugs. So this gets off on everything. Extremes in happiness, extremes in sadness, extremes in pain and sadism and masochism. And of course that goes along with the sex part Yo, of it as well. It's generally referred to with sex because of the color scheme, very purple, lots Yo. of exposed genitalia. A lot of their models have like exposed nipples and stuff. And that is generally the theme you go for from a physical side, but it really embodies everything, mainly pain and also the, the excessive amounts of emotion. So when it comes down to it, you'll find a lot of them have things like spikes or whips or any kind of BDSM style gear because it is unspeakable excess, the prince of pleasure. Everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening. That is Slanesh in a nutshell. A little bit bizarre and a little hard to describe sometimes, but as we talk more about the Dark Eldar layer in this video, you'll understand it far, far better. I'm gonna stop pausing because this video is long. I'm sorry thinking, about that, y'all. Why would anyone ever want to join Chaos? They all look all right. horrifying, screwed up, and just frightening things, right? Well, the thing is, is that, of course, one, your mind is put into the warp and the materium, so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when they get into your head, especially if you're a psyker. Sometimes regiments of the less mentally strong people, whether they be civilians or, say, low-level guardsmen or conscripts, can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff, and they serve their dark gods and whatever god they personally refer. However, and this might seem strange, chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil. See, the warp is every manifestation of emotion and being, every soul, every thing of existence. This includes all the good things. All the different chaos gods have another side to their coin. Korn might be death, murder, slaughter, slaughter, but he's also got this weird sense of survival of the fittest, trial by combat, and honor. Korn will never lie to you. Korn will never stab you in the back. Corn isn't about conniving and scheming. Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me, get in the ring, we're gonna murder each other hard right now. It may not be a good thing at the end of the day, but it is that other side of the coin. Him and Zeech generally okay. don't get along because Zeech is that conniving schemer, but he's also about the idea of hope. Where there is change, there is change for your predicament. There is change for your problem. The hope of the galaxy, the ability to bend the world to your will, the idea that your fate is not set in stone, but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control it whenever you want. The changer of ways, that is Zeech. And of course, Zeech and Nurgle hate each other because while Nurgle does represent stagnation, death represents finality an ending, the fact that you can be mentally at peace knowing that you will end and how you will end. Oh, okay, that's, unknown, that's actually not that bad. Is not present with Nurgle. With Nurgle, everything will rot and die, and that provides that finality, that ability that oh. this is over. We are all okay. the same, and we will all end the same. We know the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to live and die and rot. Okay. And with that, his isn't so bad, even though he looks so crazy. Is a lot more simple. While they are the excess of emotion, they are also the representation of emotion. Sonesh embodies happiness. 
Celestia embodies excitement and joy and pleasure, not only in the sense of the physical, you know, bam oh. style of pleasure, but also everything else like food and drink and uh, air on your cheek and sunlight, the feeling, emotion and feeling. Oh, All of that so is also everyone has like a yin and yang. Okay, I so understand. You have to ask why are they always represented as super evil skulls Facts. and spikes on everything and want to murder everybody? Yeah. I don't really got an answer for you on that oh. one. My assumption is that That's because just Warhammer. mentally humans may think worse thoughts, even if we don't act. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That's true. Wow. That is that's very true. Because if you think about it, bro, whenever it comes down to it, if you if you were to go up to like the average human being, um, a lot of human beings, bro, would like like naturally and, and and that was, I mean, for me, I wasn't really like a naturally evil thinker or whatever, but I would have like some bad thoughts sometimes. But bro, if you go up to like the, to like some people, bro, they would have like these crazy deep, like deep thoughts. Like, I'm not, I'm not even talking about like crazy to the point where I got to call 911. I'm talking about like depression, um, you know, heartbreak, whatever. Like they, they think of a lot of these negative scenarios and they end up happening to them because they, they keep thinking about these negative things. It's hard for a lot of these people to think of positive things. And this is why for me, um, it's crazy that he even said that because I try to put myself in a lot of positive like situations in my mind. Um, no joke, no lie, no anything. Like I actually noticed that, which is crazy that he even said that because I actually started doing that uh, this year, you know, trying to think positively, trying to think whatever, because in reality, bro, a lot of people, they, they like in, in their brain, bro, a lot of positive stuff don't really go on. They usually think about a lot of negative stuff. So if I'm being honest with you, that's actually a fair analogy. That's that's fair. On them, and therefore they're projected in the warp more. Yeah. That one's a little bit weird. I don't know. This yeah. is being spitballing right now. But no, no, no. I don't know. You need a you need a super bad guy. I understand. You already got the Imperium of Man. You need somebody to be a little bit worse than them. No, but I understand. So his, I understand demons. that. Honestly, who cares? I just want to buy like a bird magician. Look at him. So that does cool. look cool. That does so look cool. So combining all this together on the tabletop, chaos demons are generally very melee based. They run in, go really hard. You have lots of summoning and okay. conjuring, tons of spells. Generally a little bit frail, but they have special saves to make them a little bit stronger. You've got giant demons and smaller demons. You got hordes of little boys and tons of big guys. Yeah. Demons are as they seem. Demons. Nurgle yeah. is slow. Uh, Corn is super scary in melee. You've got Zeech, who are far more into psychers and spellcasting, and then Slanesh, who is all melee, really, really, really fast, but squishy, but in lots of hordes of tons of melee and, and pain. Bro, and the and thing got whips too. So overall, the demons are a huge part of 40k and a massive threat to almost every single faction, with the exception of a couple. However. The big part about demons is also transferred into the other nine Primarchs we didn't talk about, which are the Chaos Space Marines. Mm. Uh-oh. Why do I, so I got a bad feeling about this one. All of his boys, all of them in the Primarchs, they have all also become Chaos Boys, and they all have their own special Chaos Legions, specializing in so many different things, just like the Adeptus Astartes, the Angels of Death, the regular Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines aren't a whole lot different than the regular Space Marines. They have the same armor, you know, the same training and toughness. They just specialize in different kinds of things. And also a lot of their Primarchs have ascended into greater de- is it greater demons? They're demon Primarchs at this point. Gigantic, horrifying man-demon hybrids that are pretty awesome, if I'm gonna be honest. They look really, really cool. But them and their associated legions that they are a part of are all kind of going out there and causing a large ruckus for everyone else. Considering the raw strength and firepower of a legion of space marines, imagine that entire legion just converting to chaos and immediately fighting you. It's generally pretty horrifying. There's a lot of them, so I gotta write them down. But you've got the Emperor's Children with Primarch Fulgrim, loyal to Slanesh. These people, they are some messed up people. They're just sensory overload, tons of drugs, tons of torture. And I think Fulgrim is a demon no. Primarch right now. And oh God, I am terrified to see what that man looks like, at least on the tabletop, because emperor's children are not good people you yeah. got the iron warriors which are kind of like opposite of the imperial fists with primarch Perturabo, i believe is his name they're chaos undivided they just kind of serve chaos in a general aspect instead of choosing one of the four but the iron warriors are big on the siege and fortification and they're basically entirely against the imperial fists and a major rival Perturabo, i believe is also still alive and i'm also very interested to see what he looks like because 
Demon Primarchs are badass. You've got the Night Lords with Primarch Conrad Kurz. Have I seen him before? Conrad Kurz is dead, which is good because he's a sick fuck. But the Night Lords are generally about terror, terrorizing people and terrorism. They're oh. generally about fear and probably so. You've got the World Eaters with Primarch Angron still alive. Also excited to see. Angron, if you think you've known an angry person, Angron is the angriest son of a bitch. I mean, you he has ever angry know. in his Angron name. Angron removed parts of his brain that didn't make him angry, so he could be angrier. No, he didn't. No, no shot. No, no, no shot. Mad. You've got the no Death Star with Primarch Mortarion. No they actually have their own special <laughs> codex and their own. Bro, <laughs> bro removed dopamine from his brain just so he could be mad. That's crazy. Army. That's tabletop. crazy. Mortarion himself is actually one of the models, and and look at him, look at him. It's so cool looking. Of course, Nurgle. Cool based, looking. Obviously. That thing looks so nasty. Very slow but very tanky. You got the Word Bearers with Primarch Lorgar. Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment, but the Word Bearers are generally the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. You got the Black Legion with Primarch Horus. Get fucked. I know who that is. You got the Alpha Legion with Primarch Alpharius Omegon. Chaos, I think. And then finally, you've got the Thousand Sons with Primarch Magnus the Nerd. Uh, the Thousand Sons also have their own book, just like the Death Guard. Magnus I know who a Thousand Sons is. I know who they are. Model. He looks super cool, as you can tell. And they're all super heavily psyker and kind of Egyptian themed. They look pretty neat. But overall, with all of these Chaos Space Marine factions, you can play as a lot of a lot of different ones. But the main ones that you can really work at are standard Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. See this right here. This is a really good way to describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with their broken corpse of an emperor fail to understand is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot hide or flee or shield themselves from the triumph of chaos. They are finite and we are unbound, undivided. They must not err or they shall fall to heresy. All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. They strive merely to hold back our fury and might, and it consumes them. Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we lurk within the darkness of their souls, on the tip of their tongues, in their tortured dreams. We are them, but freed from the shackles of ignorance. We are them, grown strong, evolved. We are them, but so much more. As hardcore as that quote is, the saddest part is they're mostly right. Chaos is basically unkillable. You could probably get rid what? of Space Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. Yeah. But every soul that dies goes to the warp. Every Chaos soul will end up back in the warp. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Every demon you banish will return at some point. Chaos So they just don't die? The warp is unending. And while maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow, the resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of bro. Man that's and sad the though. The current moment that it's sad because like bro, it's like an infinite loop. Like it's like all right, cool, you get killed, you you become whatever, you go to the warp, and then like you come. Like, and then, like, when you're in a warp, bro, the warp is, like, bro, that's the bottom of the bottom. Like, that, that's the evil of the evil. Man, I feel bad, bro. Really? It's just an unstoppable force Dang. that keeps on coming, and it's just barely being slowed. Chaos is by far the biggest threat. They are without number. Their legions are everywhere, and, yeah, they're pretty scary. So, I promise, we're done with humans now. Let's talk about some Xenos. The Elder. All right, here we go. So let's talk about the mm, Eldar, matter. also known as the Eldari, which are a super hyper-specialized and very technologically advanced race of, well, elf people. They were, as well, responsible for the creation of Slanesh, the newest demon god. How'd they do that? Wait, what? Debauchery on a world-ending scale. Whoa. See, back in the day, it was just Korn, Zeech, and Nurgle. And the Eldar are very, very ancient, millions of years. These Eldar, however, have a bit of a sensory problem. 
Oh, you know, no. Every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little bit amplified compared to the normal. However, with Eldar, as their race advanced so excessively, and they became so re self-reliant, and everything became so easy, there was no requirement for food production anymore. Oh, there was no shortages. Snap. Everything was basically done. Everyone oh, was no. so comfortable. And that comfort breeded this weird sedation. And that sedation uh, yep. breeded the requirement for more and more nope. debauchery. Yep. Nope. Yep. Basically, they had too much dopamine. They had too much fun. There was no challenge. There was no nothing. They, everybody got too comfortable. Um, th there was nothing that, there was nothing, th there was no purpose. There was no purpose anymore. So they, it was just GG's. Wow. And so basically they had so much fun to the point to where fun wasn't even fun anymore. And they wanted more fun and they wanted more fun and they wanted more fun. Dang. Hey. Dang. When everything you have can be so easily acquired, you will end up down this road yep. of pure debauchery. Yep. All of the senses the Eldar had that were so yep. powerful, things like feeling, happiness, sadness, yep. and Numbed just out. evil and good, Numbed all out. needed to be satisfied and satiated. Yep. And the desire to satiate these senses grew more and more Dang. with worse and worse debauchery. Oh, wow. It started off with things like sex and drugs becoming oh. so much more rampant because of these are the first things you generally turn to when requirements for living are so easily accessible. Yeah. It would get to the point that made Sander Cohen in Bioshock look sane. All right, this is the kind of debauchery it led to. It was constantly satisfying and satiating these sexual oh, and sadistic no. or masochistic fantasies that only elevated and elevated. And this was species wide. People started going down darker, more depraved, and more violent paths as time went on. Wow. However, some people didn't entirely take to that. Some of the Eldar were looking at this depraved species that they had become and said, I no thanks for me, dog. I'm good. And they bailed. These are the crap. I, I would have bailed too. I they can't lie to you. On these giant continent-sized starships called Crap worlds. They believed in learning the old ways of the Eldar and pushing away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would segment themselves. Oh, so on they like reset it. Crap worlds far in the outer reaches of space. They even had this thing called the Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with the yeah. Imperium? Well, the Eldar had something way safer called a Webway. And the Eldar Webway is actually like a pocket dimension kind of thing. And in that pocket dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved groups and clans that would spend their time in there. And if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X-10. So all of this continued, and it continued, and it bloated until oh, Sinesh wow burst forth. All that emotion, all that mental, well, thought processes, I suppose, all of this in such a condensed space. Don't forget, this is all being shot, all their souls as well, into the warp. All of this depravity right into the warp. Wow. So what happened? Boom. Sonesh was birthed and killed off 90% of the entire Eldar population. Untold trillions, trillions had their souls ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by Slanesh demons. The entirety of the Eldar race was eaten alive and their souls consumed to the Prince of Pleasure. Bro, this sounds like humans, bro. Think about it. This sounds like humans. And I don't want to get too deep or nothing, but if you really think about it, bro, in the, in the world and uh, of today's world, bro, like people are so like, people are so like depraved of like dopamine, bro. Like, bro, everybody's so like dopamined out that people are starting to get like, like people are starting to get tired, bro. Some people are like going to extreme measures to like get like that, like that itch of like happiness off. Like some bro, like that's real life, bro. Like some people, and I'm not saying like obviously it's not as extreme as this, but like bro, like as he was talking about like how, how everybody like you know was like really just numbed out basically, and how they needed like you know like just extreme measures to finally feel something, bro. That feels bro, like that. It's like humans, bro. Like 
like if you really think about it, bro, a lot of people are really going through that. I think, and the thing is, right? I think a lot of people are going through that phase of like, of having too much of something. And when you have too much of something, you it is either two ways. Either is either you go back and be like, all right, cool, I've had a lot of that. Let me just not have that anymore. And then you know, and then maybe I'll re- and then maybe I'll return to it in like a year or two or something like that. Or you can keep going that way of. All right, well, this is not enough. I need more. I need more, whether that's sex, drugs, whatever. Like, and people, bro, people really, you know, and it, you, again, there's only two ways. You can either go back, revert back, and be like, all right, I'm not doing that no more. Uh, and, like, you know, and, and, and finally, like, what's, what's, is the best way to do it? Because if you want to feel something, well, I'm not telling you guys to, like, you know, do drugs or nothing, but I'm telling you, like, if you want to, you know, if you want to feel something again, you might as well revert back and not do it anymore for a while and then go back to it. Then you can feel something. And I, again, I'm not saying do drugs. I'm not saying it at all. I'm not saying that. I just have to make sure that's a thing. But you get what I'm saying. Like, uh, like a lot of people are, are going through that. So, um, yeah, I just thought I was like, yo, like humans are kind of going through that too. Like, like you know, like uh, like like the whole like dopamine thing, like, they, like a dopamine overload, basically. All of them. Wow, that's crazy. Fucked up. It was so bad that it literally ripped a warp hole into the fabric of the materium called the Eye of Terror. That's literally this like quasi horrifying gateway portal from the materium and the immaterium right next to Cadia. <laughs> and it is horrifying. Dang. So this Slanesh, also known as She Who Thirsts, Horny of Elgar, slaughtered the entire population except for right, a right. couple. Those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. That crazy crack, that birth of Sonesh only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape, but Sonesh got their sights on them. Every time an Eldar will die, their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh. Craft world or not. What about those people in the webway? Well, Wait, what? imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold on. These people are the Dark Eldar, or also known as the Drukhari. The Eldar population right now is so massively small. It is minuscule compared to any of the other pop well, most of the other populations in the universe. The Eldar are consistently having issues trying to get their population up because as their souls are constantly being hungered by from Sonesh, they realize their entire species is doomed and they understand it very well. Since the time of the fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. All the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye. The birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming, casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place, and it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds, a conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all my steps lead towards it no matter that I walk other paths. I see the stars stain red with the blood of the Monkai and though their wars do not concern me, I would gladly let them destroy one another. I know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my- It's a nice third party right there. I like that. And though all I see is darkness, I know that I will not flinch from my destiny. And now let's talk about cute plastic models. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. The first playable race we have for the Eldar are the craft world Eldar and living in those craft world starships I mentioned earlier. And each of them have their own kind of craft world, almost like a space marine legion. Each craft world is it's in itself its own special kind of group. And the Eldar themselves are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. They are squishy, a bit weak, but they're very in tune as psychers. Tons mm. of psychers across the entire Eldar population. They're like zebras. And their weaponry and abilities are fast and extremely hard hitting, but of oh, course, never mind. fragile. 
understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. They are all over the place in confusion and trickery on a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar, in their own right, really rely on this to keep their species alive. They need to think about deception and the strangeness of what they do if they truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These craft worlds hold millions upon millions of people. And as they continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft worlds expand, losing a few people in battle, while hurts a lot, they aren't really losing what's extremely precious to them. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It's that they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. They're still a doomed race being sucked into Slaanesh every time someone dies, but they are definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. Eldar are fast, cunning, and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. They also call humans Monkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. Um, that is a derogatory slur for humans in the Warhammer world. Are you calling us some monkeys? Yo, for real? Yo, they're calling the humans monkeys. Yo, you think you Frieza? Are you serious right now? Yo, I gotta say my mic is on. Yo, calling us monkeys is insane. You can't fool us, Monkai. Now that sounds like monkey. Uh, why is it called Monkai? Well, it's because you can't, in your game, call people monkeys. <laughs> On the tabletop, exactly what I said. Not very tanky, generally pretty squishy, hit like I told you, I told you, the fast, racism is crazy. Hard, die fast. I told you. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only you. carry on. It is a message even a human can understand. <laughs> Eldar. So, Drukhari. I told Let's you. Let's talk about the Dark Eldar. On today's episode of How Fucked Up is Fucked Up, that's fucked up. So, those people I mentioned in the webway, in the super deranged cults, and the depraved people of the Eldar, in the webway, they didn't quite get a hold onto them. So, Nash, like, has them, but it has them on, like, by the pinky finger. And they're slowly being consumed by Slanesh, but they found out they can stave her off by doing Slanesh things. The Dark Eldar are by far the worst, most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, and brutal race in all of Warhammer 40k. Wait, for These real? are entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction, to go into planets, raid them, and take as many slaves as they possibly can to torture them for one, five, 10, 20, a million years, because that torture will keep them from dying. They look very BDSM style too. They definitely have a lot more spiky bits and they have a lot more of that kind of leathery black look to them. But let's, example, let's oh, say you're a are bunch an of freakazoids. citizen. Okay. Living life on a regular planet. Okay. You get invaded by the Necrons. The Necrons will shoot you with a de-atomizer and you will be destroyed in a millisecond and that's it. Nice. Not the worst way to go. Okay. Uh, you are invaded by Chaos Marines or something. You take a bolter shot to the head or a chain sword across your stomach and you get cut in half. Painful, but not the worst. Yeah. Uh, the orcs arrive. They beat you to death. Oh. Hurts, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Tyranids, oh, yeah. they eat you alive. It's pretty rough. Okay, nice teeth. The Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar. Uh, this is going to get a little graphic. I apologize. Okay. You pray you die. You don't. You are instead taken as a human slave. Your life will be endless work and agony. 24-7. They will make sure you can't not die as your pain satisfies them. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. They will inject pain-based like stimuli drugs directly into your nervous system. They will slowly run razor blades across your skin. They will flay you and just pull out your teeth and your fingernails one by one. They will remove your appendages and your skin and wait for it to grow back so they can do it again. They will murder and torture and use the R word, it rhymes with grape, your entire family in front of you and- Oh man, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no bro, oh no, oh no.
Oh, no. No, 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 bro. No, 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 no. No. Something gotta give. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Hold up. Nope. No, nope, mm -mm. nope, nope, uh-uh, nope, uh-uh, something gotta give, I gotta break the cheese, I gotta, listen, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you, I am I still good, I think I'm still good, I gotta break the cheese, nope, I gotta break the chains, bro, nope, nope, I gotta break, I gotta, listen, I gotta, I gotta fight, bro, I gotta fight, I don't care, bro, I gotta fight, bro, mm-mm, Bro, bro, I, mm, I don't know if the spirit uh, of, of of Hercules, bro, go have to come into my body, bro. I'm breaking every chain. Something you gotta give, bro. This, no, mm -mm. no, nope, 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 nope. That's crazy. Mm, nope, nope, mm. nope. Something gotta give, bro. I can't lie to you, bro. I'm becoming a D1 crash out, bro. Uh, let, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'm becoming a LeBron James high school prospect crash out. I, I, nope. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna be. I don't know who. L l hey, whoever came up with that, bro, you need to be reevaluated. Cause that's crazy. This is, bro. This is ludicrous, and I'm not. I, I'm not talking about the rapper. This is crazy work, bro. This, bro. Whoever came up with this, bro, bro, bro. You know what? Come outside, bro. Give me thirty seconds. Bro, give me my 30 seconds, bro. This is not... No. 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 No, bro. This is this is too much. No, that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. Bro, even people in hell don't even go through that. No. Uh-uh. Nope. Do the exact same thing to them. You yourself will also be rhymes with grape anywhere what? and everywhere possible. What? And this will occur for 20 years until you are no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted, crushed, and twisted into some form of trophy, a fleshy trophy, or a ring, or a couch. Oh, Lord or a Jesus TV Christ. Stand, oh, my God. Or perhaps a wonderful hat while you are, of course, still alive and breathing. And oh. you will become a moaning, fleshy toy. trophy toy for eternity oh lord jesus christ have mercy what happens oh my god that's not even elders. like they are the most depraved most horrifying i don't like them in all of 40k they look the part and they do it so they all don't die they are no. literally forced to do this no 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 bricky you're not no 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 bricky bricky i love you bro but you're not about to do that you're not about to sit here and try to like you know oh my god guys come on guys don't worry they're forced to do it. man i don't care bro this is ridiculous nah bro nah no 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 nope mm -mm. i don't care bro i do not care oh bro they're forced nah i don't care bro i don't care bro don't do it bro die like a man bro die like a man bro what would what, what, what you what mean you're forced to do this like you nah bro you love it bro you love bro you smiling from ear to ear bro bro you, you, you smiling from ear to ear the guy behind you is laughing like like we're at an eddie murphy uh like we're at an eddie murphy show the guy behind you is, is is cracking up hysterically like like we're at a dave Chappelle show this this is this is ridiculous no 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 bricky you're not about to sit here and be like oh well guys they gotta do it bro or or, or, they, or they're gonna die man they gotta die then they not touching me. No, no. Mm -mm. They not. No. This this is this is bariculous, bro. So Nesha's grip will get harder, and they will have their souls pulled. Man, away. take their soul, man. As long as they keep doing this, so Nesha's like, you're doing good, man. Nah, you're take their soul. Solid. You keep you keep that. Take shit the soul, up, bro. You elf ear bastards. That's that's the that's the dark. Take their soul, bro. Dukari. Take their soul, bro. Horrible. On the tabletop, they're actually kind of like Eldar. Uh, man, but hey, they, hey, they're not coming to my tabletop. They are even they're squishier done. than the Eldar, but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks. They are not going anywhere near really my tabletop. Speed, Just like, being get respectful. around them, do a lot of damage, get away kind of stuff. That's the most of the dark Eldar. Look up the definition of grim dark in a dictionary. You'll find my bad, y'all. Sorry about that. Eldar. And Sev from Public Commando. A quote from uh, Mr. Vect. We are the lords of despair, masters of terror, dread and agony are our meat and wine, and they are plentiful 
indeed. See, like, bro, you enjoy it. Like, you're. It's, I, Dark Eldar. It's not even Some a life or death queens. thing for you, bro. Clowns. What's the matter, Andy? Don't you want to have some fun? The Harlequins are a bizarre race of Eldar. They're demonic clown performers. They're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen from Bioshock and Jin from League of Legends, but in a more clown theme. They're, they're artists of death and perfectors of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari so people. They guard something called the Black Library, which is this giant tome of never-ending knowledge deep in the heart of the Eldar webway, and also guarded by their god named Kegarok, I believe is how you pronounce his name. I thought you said Kakarok. god, but it's the Eldar's laughing god? And these are the Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns, okay? So imagine the things that an Eldar these depraved individuals would find funny. And this is the god of that. It's, it's a horror clown. These are gods of horror for us normal people. For them, they're like, oh, ho, ho, it's so funny. They're all dying horribly. Ho, 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 honk, honk. They're very bizarre and difficult to describe. Uh, they've escaped the ruinous powers of Slaanesh somehow, but their main thing is guarding that black library. How did they the escape? just... They're Wait, how did they escape? Performers. They're barely any models on the tabletop. So they're, they're demon jesters. They're, they're demon clowns. Yeah, they're demon I, jesters. I'm not sure. I, I got a quote. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos, for Slaanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar, and to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. What? To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. Oh, they're nah. very strange. The Harlequins, Drakari, yeah, Eldar, they are an anomaly that make humans seem completely easy to understand in comparison. They range from rekindling their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns. They're all over the place, but honestly, they represent quite well and are rather interesting, especially with the whole Slaanesh murdering everyone bit. So, yeah, Eldar. Now, bugs. Come on, they're following me, Ma. They're following me. Who, who following you? The bugs. The bugs. The, the tyranids. <laughs> Now, you want to talk something a little more fun, a little before. more simple than all this crazy Eldar yeah, give shenanigans? Yeah, something simple, man. Let's Come talk on. the Tyranids. They're bugs. Do they look like Zerg? Hell yeah, they look like Zerg. You want to know why they look like Zerg? Because they were actually supposed to uh, be what Zerg were. Uh, apparently, StarCraft was supposed to be a 40K game in the beginning, hence why they look so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Oh, like, okay. Kind of Space marine -y. Those Marines, huh? Yeah. They look a little bit Space marine -y to me. Oh. Maybe. I don't know. It kind of You really does. fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't you? Oh, Tyranids dang. are a giant infestation of unfathomable oh, proportions. These are giant, extremely bio-advanced hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate, to be extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path. They are probably the least evil faction in all of 40K because all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire galaxy. <laughs> they angry and we food. Okay. Also, this Tyranid hive mind has- They're just trying to live. I understand that. They <laughs> They the just—they just trying to live like any other bug on Earth. Right I understand. Massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow. They just the trying to survive. Space, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids. These are just easy pickings. Oh, and wow. An entire giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of orbit and just will massacre, absorbing all that biomass. Oh, never mind. Yeah, they're, they're not like our bugs on Earth. Never mind. 
Tyranids Never mind. even more advanced monsters. They come in so many varieties too, all in, based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for s scouting and having little dudes eat people up, to the hormigons, termagons, and gene stealers, all the way to the hive guard and the exocrines and the swarm lord, to hive tyrants and their giant battle fleets, and even something as crazy as the hierophant bio titan. The tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, uh, carapaces and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms and are pretty spooky when it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding yeah, them, they'll bugs. keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? What? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid Hive fleets. Behemoth, Kronos, Oh, he's talking about in the game. Oh, I thought he was talking about in real life. they arrived in the galaxy from different points. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying. Because as far as we know, we could just be surrounded Yo, yo, Bricky, Bricky, don't say we, okay? The You're making it seem like it's real life. I'm about to say, yo, are, are we serious? It's a little bit hard to have a bunch <laughs> Come of on now. off of one hive mind genocidal monsters. All these giant bugs swarming in, killing and eating everybody and evolving. Oh, I mean, as cool as there are, there's some cool characters, the Swarm Lord, Old One-Eye. You can't really have a whole bunch of major character-based stories around them. As awesome as they are, they're simple. They want to eat you. They want to eat you and absorb your biomass. They are simple bugs. If you want something a little more complex, sell from Dragon Ball. Gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want. I get around faster than walking, and wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. Gene stealer cults are a special <laughs> brand of tyranid that can slowly <gasps> what? infect themselves into different kinds of society, and by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all. Why do they look? Why do? Why do they look like? They look like different versions of like. Firefly from Batman and like Mr. Freeze from Batman. They they kind of like a hybrid of the two. Like I don't know, is it me? Damn, they hey they got some shiny heads though. Hey bro, what type of barber they be going to? In these real, right? Hey, I need my head like theirs, man. I'm tired of this, man. Tyranids, I'm tired of it. Gods and these brood lords and I think they're called patriarchs all can turn an entire world all based into gene stealers and these are called gene stealer cults an entire hive world of the imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the tyranid masters just by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code a little oh, bit oh no they also have this cool like mad max look which is really neat they are definitely True. one of the biggest oh wow the imperium i didn't even notice besides that besides chaos I, I keep saying biggest start the imperium they're up there though because you dingus stepped on a bug in middle school Asshole. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions Dang, on call it an abomination. galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineered monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Mm. Here it is. They're cool. The ops. But are they as cool as the orcs? Every spring's got legs. <laughs> that means I'm super fast. Orcs, 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 <gasps> orcs, 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 orcs. I fucking love orcs. So, what? yes. Really? The, the green monsters, the green tie, the green skins. Man, they, These, they like cracked out strikes. Orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons. They're big boys. They have axes, and they have got big. I need that big and they boy. And there are so many of them. The only reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. Orcs are so cool. Oh, orcs was that don't me? Have philosophy orcs don't have okay i'm good oh prices. my bad sorry about that y'all who's the biggest orc you listen to that guy because he the biggest orc he big orc big orc knows best you win through the power of imagination 
Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the Orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? As an Orc, you're, you're enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is How the was man that good? who understands everything. No. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, which is just <laughs> hilarious to me. Those are orcs. You're, and they, hey, they got the fight. British you teeth. You like to fight. Your whole purpose <laughs> is to fight. You wage war. Stop. Because you want to wage war. You got your boss over there. And you better listen to the boss. Because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is orc dead can't fight. Because orc dead. GG's. They scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense. And because they believe, they have the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. If that machine's Wait, what? out of gas, you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel, and you run out of gas, some orc behind you is like, oh, oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier. And all the other orcs are like, oh, yeah, I, we, you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on, and it works again. Does it have gas? Probably not, but it works the power of imagination oh. they paint things red because it makes them think that goes faster they paint things <laughs> purple because it's the sneakiest <laughs> color you want to know why you ever seen a purple orc didn't fucking think so Ooh. orcs are also like ancient as hell they're back in the eldari time frame but that, back then they were called crooks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent now they're just orcs i'm and sorry about that y'all and they smack things but they're pretty spooky they're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs. There are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. Maybe more. Who knows? But they keep on, you know, murdering each other. So oh. it's not too bad of an issue. Orcs are entirely... I'm going to say, like, why do they keep... Relief. Like, Their what? stuff is slapped together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work smart. the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. Orcs care only about who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc, they murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs who are just excited. So they're just like big something. tanks. They're just slashers. They don't slashes. care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. Oh, wow. They're just ready to fight. Orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip, and they're really fun. Excuse I have me, never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that hey. guy. Orc players have this kind of fun. A question: Are there actual like like uh, on these on these like top tables and stuff like that? Are there actual just like like can somebody show me like um like a whole top table where there's like like because I never seen one of these. I never seen a top table like a war's uh, I, bro. I almost said war zone. I haven't seen like a warhammer top table. In real life, never before. So, if somebody can ever like send me a picture of like you know, um, of like their like you know Warhammer top table, or whatever. That would be absolutely fire. I, I would definitely love that. So, so them because when you play, that would be fire. You are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing, guardsmen, Imperial guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a fifty percent chance. What? Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because they're well trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're just super well-trained. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. But if they roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Wait. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. They're so wacky and silly. Wait, the there's dice in a Warhammer out, game? You roll yo, high, I'm, and you keep rolling high, yo, you are going to crush. Bro, people. I'm a menace whenever it comes to dice. You lose. I mean, that's what get, you get when you play orcs. That's Wait, what happens when you play yo, orcs. Yo, there's it's dice a in, in a Warhammer game? That's why you can't be a salty Oh, man, hold up. Orcs because things won't go your way. 
It's Yo. just to roll the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you're, you're going to play some damn hmm. orcs. But on the opposite side of the let's talk about the Necrons. Who the hell is this? The Necrons. The Necrons are spooky, scary skeletons and very grim, dark again. <laughs> They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators, and they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Krork, Orc, Necron, yeah. Necron tier. Yeah. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty people. He, he got a six Not pack. they were personally Good shitty, for him. because their lives were awful. They were oh. ill-fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible Ooh. planet they lived on, and everything Ooh. just really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. Oh, my they heart. really were looking for immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them, and therefore they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy. And they found this group. They're called the Old Ones. Imagine them kind of like the Forerunners in Halo or the Zelnaga in StarCraft, right? These Old Ones were these sp strong, oh, pretty much omnipotent beings. And they, of course, knew the key to immortality. So the Necrons went to them and said, please, show us your ways. And the Old Ones said, piss off. Not really, they were a lot more humble about it, but they did not want to share their secret of immortality with the Necrons. The Necrons, of course, took this very well uh, um, um. and waged war with them, kind of under this united banner. The Necron different <laughs> dynasties didn't really like each other, but under this one man, the Silent King, he thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war with the Old Ones out of spite for them Dang. keeping the secret of immortality to them. Because they wouldn't give up the Krabby Patty secret formula. You know what? I'm going to war too, bro. I'm this going was to war known too, as bro. War in heaven, and this is actually like a multi-stage war because during this war in heaven, they discovered the star gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan or the Catan. These star gods were also very much like old ones, almost omnipotent beings, and they too had the key to immortality. Are they like angels? And so the Necrons went to them and said, "Hey, can you help us fight off the old ones?" Can you help us kill these old ones? You, the Catan. And the Catan said yes. And in fact, oh, never mind. we can help provide you with the immortality you so desperately Oh, no, they're not the angels. So never the mind. silent king of the Necrons decided to make a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them. But this, of course, had Was been a, a horrendous trap. And the Necrons were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the souls of the Necrons. As this was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves what? just to serve their will. Tricked and them! With their newfounded Necron Dang. army, they pointed their guns at the old ones and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their genocide, complete and full genocide of these old what? ones. The old ones did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight off the horrifying Necron army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones Dang. were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy. Their entire race completely removed. Ring. Full on, 100% genocide. However, during all this, the Catan, so just, infatuated with their victory started fighting each other for fun for sport and for small differences doesn't matter the katana with these over overpowered people they're going to eventually hit each other at some point okay. and as they began All just right. menially fighting each other the eldari and the orcs actually started pushing on the katan's borders a little bit giving them a little bit of a run for their money oh, snap. And as this continued this is when the silent king who retained his consciousness decided to leap into action and start a full 
full-scale revolt against their Catan masters. And this revolt was bloody, as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they took these Catan and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, yeah. they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap them in giant stasis vaults to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. And with what? the Necrons having the entirety of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Krorks. And so what they did is they retreated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus guy diddled with a green console and now the Necrons are back and they see all these primitive races on their lawns and they think, get the fuck off. <laughs> the Necrons are back, super advanced and they are here to reclaim the galaxy. Uh oh, GG's. So rightfully believe they better take it back. Now on a tabletop, they're a lot like that. Tons of undead Egyptian skeleton robots that when they die, they just... They kind of like uh, Star Troopers a little bit. Hard to kill. Tons of a little bit. Stuff. Only a little bit. use the Catan themselves as units to fight with. Pretty cool. Are they... Necrons are the, one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons are all pretty substantial events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty, pretty dang cool as well. Here's a good quote from a wonderful Dawn of War game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. When I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. My lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. We will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons are also pretty smug. Trays in the infinite especially. A little, little dickhead. <laughs> speaking of dickheads, last race. Let's talk the Tau. We made a fucking walkie. The exact formation of the Tau Empire is not entirely understood. What is the last However, one? However, a long, long time oh, ago, dang it is. thousands of years ago, of in the 40k world that is all right so let's enjoy this last one y'all navigation vessels were going around through different areas and they saw a primitive race blue people dang his head long sticks and stones they thought yeah dumb xenos race who gives a shit and they bailed then this giant warp storm occurred <laughs> right in that major area unable to be breached then once that warp storm six thousand years later subsided hello those little sticks well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. And now they have gigantic starships and Gundam robots and uh -oh. lasers and railguns and mechs, and they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That is oh, just the okay. Tau Empire. Uh, they have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. All species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The greater good is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in Halo, where they have the overarching prophets being the ethereals who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull at strings a little bit. But then you have all these different races directly underneath them and they all work together in this big group as this large foreboding race that tries to spread their weirdly pseudo-religious influence across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. That is generally the Tau. And if you're kind of wondering like what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have laser rifles and rail guns. They got giant mechs with tons of missile pods and heavy rail rifles and rail guns and burst cannons and ion accelerators and void shields and all this stuff. And that is generally what the Tau's all about. But you're probably thinking, Bricky, 
this doesn't sound that evil. Yeah. This doesn't sound very grim, dark Warhammer. Yeah. And you'd be right. The Tao Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying, grim, dark style like everybody else. They're it's about more, time. Younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because hey, I like they them. liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really like the, the dark, depressing stuff. No, I don't. I don't, don't, I don't. Really like it that much. So, no, I see, don't like the that. the Tau get a lot of hate. And a lot of that for hate what? isn't necessarily unjustified. It's mainly from a tabletop perspective. But as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the 40K universe very well. <sighs> they lack that super dark, dramatic, kind of high... I think it fits, I think it fits perfectly fine. You got to have some... At least... Everything can't be dark clouds and and hail. You get listen. You gotta have some shun, some some sunshine and rainbows. We all know the salamanders, my favorite. They're one of them. And then, bro, you got the the uh, the tile the, the the tile empire whatever. Bro, they could be our, that. Bro, I like that. It's it's different. I like that. Gothic level the Imperium. Has. I like it. They don't have the weird kind of like drug It's different. Stuff Not everything has to be dark and depressing too. and sad. And, and the Necrons ruthless. and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. The Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. And while it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. There's that. There's also the tabletop problem. Uh, in what tabletop, happened? Tau are horrible at melee combat, oh. but exceptionally good at range combat. So they blast everyone from like really, really far away, and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. So I like it basically that. just forces you to bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. Oh, and yeah. If you're doing gun to gun, they're going to win every time. Because they're the Tau, and yes, the Tau sir. are really damn good at shooting. Hey, I like. So I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna buy those. I'm gonna get them. Generally, rather hated, and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, uh, both from style and such. But this is actually one of the things. Hey, I listen, listen, to listen, listen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Hey, to all people hating, bro, just know, just know, a lot of the booze come from the cheap seats. Okay, just because you can't afford the Tau Empire. Guess what? I'm buying them and I'm beating everybody. Let's just say that, all right? Like I said before, the loudest booze come from the cheapest seats, okay? Take that one. And this video with is that the Tau, while they have their issues, you should not be discouraged from playing them. Thanks. I make plenty of Tau weeaboo jokes. Of course I will, but it's all generally in good fun. Anyone who legitimately doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You pick what you think is cool and what you like. In Warhammer, especially now, factions get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. You should only be playing what you think is cool. Facts. You like the look, you like the models. If you're talking tabletop, that is what you should be going for. Facts. Every time is what you think is badass because things change all the time. Facts. But the universe of Warhammer has so much going for it. Every faction has something interesting. Every character has a story, and there's a oh, million stories about that, yeah. to be told. The universe is vast and exciting, and while it is dark, depressing, and horrible, that is the damn charm. And out of everything I've told you in these two videos, is there anything you could take away is the reason why so many of us are so into this series and why we like it so much. Because with so much variety, such an expansive universe, I agree. so much that can be done, you can find yourself having a pretty great time. I agree. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been informative to you. Bro, shout out to Bricky, man. Uh, I reacted to part one yesterday. Today is part two. Hopefully everything came out correctly. I, I, I think we might have lagged like once or twice in this video. Hopefully we didn't, but if we did, that's my fault. That's my bad. Uh, up, uh, up, system upgrade, like like equipment upgrade will come through uh, very soon. Do not worry about that. Other than that, um, I definitely did learn a lot. I learned a lot. Uh, this video comment down below man what do you guys think about this i told you guys I, i'm gonna get you guys with part two um and uh, bro thank you guys so much for watching part one bro um i wasn't even expecting a lot of people to even watch that bro a lot of people bro you guys destroyed my expectations thank you guys so much make sure you guys like the video subscribe to the channel if you guys are new man a lot of people subscribe to the channel from that video as well man um and again man thank y'all so much i know this video is like an hour so i listen i have to make sure i get y'all like a long video um, and yeah, you know, yeah, other than that, man, I'm gonna see y'all for next time out, man.